hello everyone so in this video we are going to start over the PySpark tutorial series okay so let us try to understand the PySpark in a depth okay so in this particular video we will first start to understand what is PySpark we will try to understand about the spark architecture and all okay so let us start so what is spark spark is nothing but a, it is a distributed computing engine we generally use it for the processing we generally use it for the processing for processing large data for processing large data okay so till now we have seen like what actually we were using we were using the storage account right so with the help of the storage account we were actually trying to store the data so if we have a larger amount of the data so what actually we can use in amazon space we can use s3 in azure space we can use a blob storage right similarly we have a hdfs where actually we try to store our data in a distributed manner okay now this is for the storing but if you have to process this all the data if we have to process this all the data then we use a spark or map reduce or map reduce okay spark is very faster than map reduce and it is 100 times faster because of this in memory computation because in memory only it does the computation that's why the spark is very powerful and that's why company also use a spark okay now let us talk about why pi spark pi spark is an interface for apache spark in a python see we all know the capability of the python right here we have a multiple libraries which is available which makes our life very easy with pi spark you can write python and sql like command to manipulate and analyze the data in a distributed processing environment okay that actually we will see when we will do a practical so we have a multiple library that is available in a python so what actually we are using we are using to process large amount of data with the capability of with the help of the python api we will use and also we will use python plus spark that's why it is very famous in our industry nowadays also most of the company are using pi spark okay we will learn more about it how actually we can use uh, PySpark how simple it is the PySpark libraries and all everything we are going to learn and how actually we can process the large amount of the data but this is nothing but uh, it is an interface for the Apache Spark where we are using a Python library okay now let us talk about the Spark architecture now let us try to understand the Spark architecture so Spark generally follow the master slave or kind of the architecture where we will be having a one master node and we will be having a different slave nodes uh, okay so let us try to understand so here we will be having one driver node okay this is a driver node under this driver node we will be having a spark context a spark context what is this spark context this is the entry level for the, your spark application this is entry level for the your spark application so we will be having a driver node and we will be having a different worker node a different worker node different worker node okay under this worker node what actually will be having will be having a executor executor okay executor and will be having a different task will be having a different task okay different task which we had to process so with the help of the executor what actually we do we try to process this task okay we try to process this task and this is nothing but our worker node okay now with the help of the spark context we also have a cluster manager cluster manager this cluster manager manage all the clusters okay so uh, so with the help of the spark context we connect with the cluster manager and this cluster manager talk to the this all the worker node okay all the worker nodes okay under this worker node we'll be having executor which execute each task and and send back the result to the driver and with this driver we actually talk the final result to the client we try to send it to the client so this is the architecture which spark follows we'll try to understand more about it in a later video when we'll do a practical we'll try to understand more about it and uh, in next video we'll see how actually in a data bricks environment we can write a pi spark code and everything we will see okay so thank you that's it in this video